Secondly, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. Dear Mr. Massa, I'm just trying to mind my own business. What's the matter? It's just another day, another black king captured. I'm about to lose my brain stuck inside this ghetto rapture. I got a lot of smoke. If you want it, you can have it. They want a hat trick, but this is black girl magic. Ain't talking about the kind that'll make you disappear, but I'm talking about the power of the melanin within. Ain't looking for trouble, but I'ma say this one time. I put two dupes up if you try to touch mine. We still want justice for Samir and Trayvon. You say you don't see color, but racism ain't blind. They targeting little kids whose skin look just like mine. So I'm paranoid, it's a war zone outside. And I'm a black queen, so if you ask me to step out of my car, you gon' have to snatch me. Cause I ain't going no damn well. Had to spend my whole life living unfair. Ancestors got my back and they right here. You can never understand, it's a nightmare. Living in my black shoes by the black rules. You can keep your handshake, I don't dap coon. The white man would go nuts if he cash shoot. But you all on his side like a damn fool. Make it make sense. We are oppressed. Queen. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. Make it Queen. make sense. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation Queen. away from us or aside from us is come together Queen. against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the texture of diet. your hair? Parents, pay attention to the books, the school system, even to your little children. Lies mixed with wisdom. His skin too bright, so he was blind to the prison. My skin just right, so I collide with the vision. You trying to pray to God, but we tired of religion. No savior saving, we got to save our savings. We used to pay, miss, how we gon' make the slave rich. But who's to blame and tell me why you complaining? We need a team effort just to rule the nation. Like a bad relationship, missing communication. We missing moderation. They trying to get a poison to my population. No reparations. I'm getting tired of Satan. We are oppressed. Queen. I'm getting are tired of wait. We are downtrodden. Queen. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. Armor diet. So the only way we're going to get some of this Armor diet. oppression and exploitation. Queen. Touch one of my new sons. They show no love for the 
the queen. Why they hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got... All right. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning back in once again to the original Queen Amadai Shakur show. I'm your host, Queen Amadai Shakur, and this is your morning wake up call. So as you're coming in, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. OK, so let's get ready to get black into it. Let's get those likes up. Please like and share. You all know how they do the Queen in these YouTube streets. Okay, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Dr. Underscore A. Shakur, TikTok at Dr. A. Shakur, and Twitter at DGoddess27. And as per usual, if you don't like what the queen is cooking, you already know exactly what to do. Okay, Virgo Flower said that beat fire queen. Thank you, beloved. Thank you. Uh, be having me dancing. Okay, that's good. All right, we the people, Buckhorse DC, Pearly. All right. Thank you, Pearlie. Mr. Elevation said the queen is in the house. All right. Nessie X, Obsidian Blades, Aboriginal Woman, Claudette, Lady Eve, Dana, Bronze Flat Power God, Queen of Moni Huey, Buns Goddess is here. All hell not in the house. Maurice Hayes said here for the MF and shite. <laughs> All right. Courtney J. Berta is here. Obsidian Blaze. Let's get into it. Everyone, please get those likes up. Okay, so let this party let us get this party started. Hey Darnell. Okay, so let's just get into it. Let's get into it, everybody. Okay, so we already know what's going down with Diddy, but it looks like everyone has abandoned him. Everyone has kicked Diddy to the curb. Nobody's speaking out on his behalf. And you know, I played for you all a list the other day of a, of a bunch of names uh, that he was calling out. Now, that list got reposted. Okay, that list got reposted. Now, that's an old list from when Diddy was having a birthday party and he was inviting those people. Uh, but what we can take away from that is that some of those people are very likely on some of the footage from the freak-offs. Okay, please pay attention. Please pay attention. Some of those people are very likely on the list or on the video footage of those freak offs, okay? We already know that Oprah parties with Diddy. I've shown you the receipts and proof, okay? And a myriad of other people, all these big time moguls, billionaires and the like, absolutely. Uh, so wouldn't be surprised if some of that stuff gets trashed, gets discarded, gets tucked away somewhere, all right? So please pay attention. But in the meantime, Diddy's so-called alleged sex workers, well, they're all saying, that they're not sex workers. And I find it interesting because young Miami, of all people, uh, is the one that I would deem most likely to be a sex worker. And that's because of things that she herself has said. Now, if you remember, when she first came out and spoke about it after Rodney Jones's, aka Lil Rod's lawsuit, she came out and said that she absolutely was not bringing pink Coca-Cola to Diddy on that private jet, that she had screenshots as proof and evidence that she was in fact in New York, not Miami at the time in question. Uh, so she denied those allegations with receipts. But what she didn't do, as I pointed out to you at the time, was deny the fact that she was a sex worker. Well, now Daphne and the other young lady are saying they're not sex workers. So now young Miami said, hey, me neither. I wasn't no worker, but I find that interesting. So let's get into it because young Miami's words are going to come back to haunt her. Okay, please pay attention. Now, first of all, Instagram model. Well, we already know Daphne Joy, 50 Cent's baby mom. She was the first one to come out and say that it was all lies and talk about getting attorneys and all of this. And now Instagram model Jade Ramey responds to claims that she was a sex worker for Diddy, a mid-federal pro. So goes on to say, Ramey has taken to social media to set the record straight following the allegations made by Rodney Lil Rod Jones in a lawsuit against the rapper filed in February. Yes, I dated someone. Dating someone doesn't directly correlate to any of the false allegations made. This is what she said in a statement via Instagram. How unfortunate we've entered, 
How unfortunate we've entered into a time when caring for someone or falling in love is worth of is worthy of scrutiny in the court of public opinion. What may be amusing for you is real life for others. And my feelings have never been for entertainment, nor are they up for discussion. We need to be more conscious as a society when ridiculing people's lives and relationships merely for enjoyment. I appreciate everyone's kind messages and support during this time. Now, Raimi, who describes herself online as a certified wellness coach and an ordained minister, <laughs> I want you all to pay attention, an ordained minister, girl, please have several seats. Uh, she boasts 1.2 million followers on the platform. Now, she and the I'll Be Missing You hitmaker made headlines in December of 2022 when they were photographed sharing a kiss during a dinner date at the Malibu hotspot Nobu. In his $30 million lawsuit against Combs, Rodney Jones, 38, claims that uh, the coming home rapper paid Raimi a monthly stipend for her work. The lawsuit also alleged that Diddy bragged about having several women on a monthly stipend. The civil complaint named Raimi Combs, his former girlfriend, Young Miami, also known as Carisha Ramika Brownlee, and 50 Cent's ex, Daphne Joy, as the alleged recipients of the cash for sex payouts. Now, the trio of women were paid a monthly fee to work as Mr. Combs' sex workers, according to the court filings, as three have denied the allegations. And so here you can see what Miss Ramey posted on her social media, which I find absolutely uh, interesting. She says that she was dating someone and she was in love. She was in love with Diddy while he was messing around with all these other women and in some cases having relations with multiple women at the same, uh, in the same instance, in the same room, according to the lawsuit, if we're to believe those things are true. Okay, she wants us to think she's just wholesome and she's an ordained minister. Now I want you all to tell me which ordained minister have you ever seen do this? Please put it in the chat. I'd like to know because I have several questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> what ordained minister do you see walking around like this? Anyone care to venture to guess? Uh, but I digress. Now, following Jones's lawsuit, Combs found himself in the crosshairs of Homeland Security's ongoing sex trafficking investigation. Federal agents moved in to seize Combs' phones and computers in L.A. and Miami as part of the federal investigation. Law enforcement officers told the Post that similar raids would happen in New York and Chicago. Now, following last month's raid, the rapper's attorney, Aaron Dyer, blasted the military-level force that federal authorities used to search the rapper's properties. So these ladies are said that they are not any sex workers. And this lady, in fact, says uh, that she was dating someone and she was in love. Okay, what do you all think about that? Because we're going to find out sooner or later when the receipts are dropped. Because these payments were being made, uh, according to Rodney Jones, they were being wired to accounts. All right? That's Jade Ramey. Now, if you remember, we've heard several salacious things about Jade throughout that lawsuit. Okay? Uh, involving improprieties. Now, let's talk about what the other one said, Young Miami. Three women named as sex workers and did his lawsuit deny allegations. And so goes on to say the three women accused of being his sex workers in the suit, did his ex Carisha Young Miami, Romika Brownlee of the group City Girls, model Jade Ramey and actor Daphne Joy. And let me just say this for the record. Uh, Jade Ramey is no model. She's an Instagram person. I don't know why these people on Instagram continue to call themselves Instagram models. You're not a model. Okay. At the end of the day, Instagram is not a modeling agency. So uh, you're not getting paid to walk down runways or wear people's fashion and design. So no, you're not Instagram models. What you are is attention whores. <laughs> That's what they are. Let's just keep it about. They're attention whores. Okay. They're out there thirst trapping. That has nothing to do with modeling, uh, but I digress. Now, it goes on to say, the three women have all denied the allegations. And here's what Young Miami said in a post on social media. She said, I'm not a prostitute, okay? I hate how this is getting spun. Well, I find that interesting, Young Miami. I find that all very interesting. Because could someone please tell me 
put it in the chat, please. What is the difference between a prostitute and a whore? I'm sorry, aren't they the same thing? Don't they both get paid for their services? Uh, because young Miami, in fact, said that she was a whore. So how are you now not a prostitute or a sex worker, young Miami? Please make yourself make sense. And let me refresh your memory for those of you who may have forgotten that she ever said this or may not have known that she even said it ever. Like, I'm really a whore. Like, I'm a, like, with a, with a W. Like, I'm a whore. But what if Summer comes to you as pretty as she is and says, Mom, I want to be a city girl? She ain't going to be no city girl. Summer ain't allowed to be no city girl? Mm -mm. I want her raised totally different. Like, like I really want her to just be like, you know, like never headed a school girl. I kind of was raised different, so I don't want to raise her up how I was raised. So, you know, I'm a city girl. Ain't nothing wrong with it, but I don't want that for my daughter. Now, she doesn't want that for her daughter. She literally said she was a whore. In that interview, she said it about four times, at least three or four times, and then she smiled and laughed. So she thinks it's funny. So she thought it was all fun and games then. But now that these nefarious allegations have come out as it pertains to Diddy and his trafficking, well, now she wants to say she's not a prostitute. Girl, you're a whole prostitute. You already told us. You already admitted it. You see how this all plays out? Okay, you see how this all plays out? Please pay attention. Uh, the bear says, yes, nicely said, queen. Attention, horse. Yes, that's what it is. Okay. That's all it is. I'm sitting blaze is all oh, Diddy looks good in pink. Uh, doesn't he though? Uh, right, Queen tells us that she definitely thinks it's funny. Yes. She thought it was all fun and games to sit there as a grown woman to say that she was a whore several times and to laugh as if it was something to be proud of. What is wrong with some of these black women of today? You see, the media doesn't have to make some of us look bad. We're good at doing it ourselves. Please pay attention. Between people like Young Miami, Sukiana, and Dusty Red, a.k.a. Sexy Red, yeah, it's looking pretty bad out here in these streets. But anyway, Miss Ramey, who also previously dated Mr. Combs, uh, said that they were false allegations. Yes, I dated someone. Dating someone doesn't directly correlate to any of the false allegations made. And then she goes on, we already know what she said. And so I am deeply hurt by the lies in Rodney Jones's lawsuit. The claim that I'm a sex worker is 100% false and it's character assassination. I'm retaining an attorney to explore all legal remedies against both Rodney and his attorney. Well, I don't know about you all, but I'll be waiting to see this because these people love to say they're going to sue and never do. Jada Pinkett said she was going to sue Brother Bilal when she was on The Breakfast Show. She said something about legal preparations are being made or whatever. I'm paraphrasing, but alluded to the fact that she was going to sue. And where's the lawsuit? Have we heard anything about it? Because I haven't. OK, this is what people often say to try to proclaim their innocence. OK, like they didn't do it. I'm filing a lawsuit for defamation, libel and slander. But that lawsuit's never filed and they never have their day in court and they never have to have any type of settlement because it's all BS. Because nine times out of 10, exactly what they're being accused of, the things that are being alleged is absolutely true. And what they, in fact, are are what they're doing. OK, I have no doubt that these young women were in fact sex workers. I mean, what do they call it when they're going on yachts and going to hotel rooms and traveling the world with Diddy, going to different states and stuff like that in different countries even, and being paid to have relations with these other people that Diddy is bringing to them, allegedly? What do they call that? I'm sorry. What else is that? Okay. And now young Miami wants to backpedal on what she already said. You already told us you were a whore. You can't take that back now. When you said it, you were in your clear and right mind and you were adamant about it because you said it more than once. Okay, I find it absolutely egregious. Nonetheless, these three workers, as 50 Cent would call them, these little sex workers, uh, they're not standing by Diddy. They haven't come out and spoken on his at his uh at his behest. They've not done any of it. In fact, the only one they say standing by Diddy right now is Mama Combs. Okay, the only woman standing by him as under fire Sean Diddy Combs is staunchly supported uh, by loyal mother Janice amid federal sex trafficking probe. No one else is anywhere to be found. Okay, no one else is anywhere to be found. 
If there's a thing a son can always rely on through the good times and the bad, or through the thick and the thin, from troubled waters to steel, it is the unwavering love and support of his mother, they say. And so it proved on Sunday when Under Fire rapper, producer, and entrepreneur Sean Diddy Combs was joined by loyal mother Janice, 83, outside his sprawling Miami home. Recently, the subject of a federal investigation into sex trafficking, the Star Island compound was back to being a family home of, of, of sorts as Diddy and Janice unwound in the spacious garden. Smoking a cigarette and casually waving at onlookers, the father of seven looked unfazed by the storm currently building around him after he was named in multiple lawsuits alleging sexual misconduct. Let me say this, you know, waving at onlookers looked unfazed. I want y'all to pay attention. Now, why do y'all think Diddy's looking unfazed? Because he clearly looks unfazed. Now, you know, uh, some people can put up a facade, but at the end of the day, Diddy is a narcissist. And narcissists always think they're the smartest ones in the room. And they always think they can pull the wool over everyone's eyes. And in fact, Diddy has leverage. Like I told you all, Diddy's not going down without a fight. Y'all think the evidence that was confiscated from his mansions is all there is? I'm telling you, I'm willing to bet money. Diddy's got other footage somewhere secretly put away in a hidden location, probably in some safety deposit box somewhere hidden in a deep, dark spot. And this is what he has. And this is the Kraken, okay? They don't want him to unleash the Kraken. Roddy said Diddy's going to snitch. Well, of course he is. If they put him in the right spot at the wrong time, I have no doubt that he'll snitch. But see, nobody wants him to snitch. Nobody wants him to start talking and spilling all the tea. All of those people whose names he called out on that list that he was invited to that party, every last one of those people is worried. Okay, I'm willing to bet you every last one of them is worried because when you go to a party like the kind that Diddy's alleged to have had and you're drinking and you're doing illegal substances, well, you surely don't remember every little detail of everything you did on that night, especially if you were really lit lit. Okay, so they don't know what Diddy has on footage of them now that they found out because I'm sure they had no knowledge of beforehand. Uh, that all those cameras were all over the homes, that they were being recorded on every turn. So I'm quite sure they have a whole lot of questions and wonders and worries about exactly what Diddy has on them. Okay, so nobody wants to go down with this Titanic. Okay, because this ship is clearly sinking. Uh, please pay attention. And so anyway, goes on to say, Lounging alongside her son in a wide brim sun hat and garish green summer clothes, Janice mirrored his relaxed demeanor, her broad grin indicating little concern for those unsavory allegations. <laughs> Not unsavory allegations, but don't believe me. Just watch. And let me show you the footage of the picture. All right. You see that? Yes, Diddy is right now bartering for his freedom, okay? Diddy is bartering, okay? He's like, yeah, I've got the goods, all right? And they've talked to him, so they know that he's got something. <laughs> what they don't know is where it's at, all right? And he's not telling them until they work out something. Uh, just pay attention. Now, like I told you all days ago, this doesn't mean he isn't going to be indicted. This doesn't mean that the grand jury hasn't already convened or isn't getting together and all of that, like I told you all last week. But at the end of the day, is he really going to serve any time? Is he really going to be convicted of any of these things? Well, likely not. Now, the pair were pictured just days after he was named in a lawsuit as co-defendant, alleging his son, King Combs, uh, assaulted a woman working on the yacht that he chartered. But as doors closed and celebrity friends distanced themselves amid the ongoing investigation, who is Janice Combs? Born December 22nd of 1940 and raised in New York City, Janice worked a variety of jobs to make ends meet after her husband, Melvin Earl Combs, did his father, was shot dead at the age of 33 in January of 1972. Diddy, also known by previous stage name Puff Daddy, was born in a public housing project in Harlem, New York, and brought up in Mount Vernon with his sister Keisha. 
but they would be raised by Janice as a single mother following the violent death of their father, a former U.S. Air Serviceman turned drug dealer, okay, who was when he was two years old. Now, I'm sorry for those of you, I don't know why y'all thought that this wasn't Diddy's real mother, okay? An associate of the feared New York City drug lord, Frank Lucas, Combs was shot and killed while sitting in his car during a reported drug deal in Central Park West. Now, let's not forget that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree because Diddy's father was an informant as well. Diddy's father was the whole snitch, allegedly, and so is Diddy, allegedly. Because let's not forget uh, that it's documented, I showed you the receipts, uh, that Diddy was, in fact, a paid informant, okay? Uh, that he was working as an informant uh, some time ago. And I find that all interesting because that would explain why he was allowed to get away with so many things. Now, right, things would just disappear. No charges pressed, charges dismissed, witnesses bribed and all of that. And in fact, you should ask yourselves, when they had that 1999 shooting, how is it that Diddy was able to get the list of witnesses and be able to see the witnesses and pay off the witnesses allegedly to testify against Shine. How was he able to pull all of that off before the prosecutors even knew who these witnesses were? In recognition of her commitment to supporting him as a child, Diddy would later name his lucrative Janice Combs Music Publishing and Janet uh and Janice Combs Management Companies after her. Look at little Diddy right here when he was all sweet and innocent. How far he has fallen. Please pay attention. Root Tracker said no notification whatsoever. You know how they do, beloved. You know how they do. So you have to make sure you check my YouTube community tab and Twitter. There he is. Look at it. This is him with his father. Whoever knew that he would turn out to be so nefarious? I'm sure his mother had no inkling of a clue. And here's his mother again. This woman does not look 83 years old. This lady does not look 83 years old. Ha! Queen Sam said couldn't close his mouth then either. Y'all are brutal. Look at his mother. Now, this woman does not look anywhere near 83 years old. I want y'all to pay attention. Okay, anyway, let me continue. Likes up, everyone, please. Like and share. Thank you in advance. So, goes on to say, In 2016, Diddy was left feeling conflicted after being told his third great grandfather was born a free man in 1850, despite living as a slave in the slave state of Maryland. In an emotional episode of Finding Your Roots Family Reunions, he was told that while it's extremely rare for African Americans to have had free ancestors during the mid 1800s, his relation uh, to Robert Alsop was, was one such individual. Uh, so anyway, now Diddy was related to a slave, uh, a, a freeman or a person who was a slave and went free. Okay, I find it all interesting. Uh, so with that all being said, what do y'all have to say about Diddy and how everyone's left him high and dry? Queen, you know some black don't crack, LOL. I know, I know. But I mean, she looks really exceptionally good for 83 years old. Okay. There they are again, getting a little bite to eat. So anyway, let's talk about it because guess what? Huh. Do you all remember when Eminem put a lyric in his song about Diddy hiring someone to take out Tupac? Well, that has resurfaced. Uh, that story has resurfaced as of days ago. I mean, because everybody's digging up everything on Diddy that they can think of. Now, listen to this. Diddy's reply to Eminem's prior claim that he killed Tupac resurfaces amid investigation. And so Sean Diddy Combs is bizarre. Uh, bizarre. I'm sorry. Hold on. This is typos. Let me see here. Okay. Anyway, uh, it was handled 
the way he handled, I think what they meant to say is Sean Diddy Combs handled it bizarrely uh, when Eminem claimed that he shot Tupac. I don't know how they have this written, who edits these things. But anyway, I digress. Uh, says that it sparked yet more controversy uh, for the embattled music mogul. Now, Diddy's response to the rapper's 2018 diss track, Kill Shot, uh, which tied him to the murder of the late rap icon, has resurfaced as Diddy is entangled in lawsuits and home raids. So in the song, Eminem rap saying, Kells, the day you put out a hit's the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got Pop killed. Okay, and so referencing the drive-by shooting that happened that took Pop's life in 1996. Now, following the release of the track, Diddy responded in a now-deleted episode of Joe Button's podcast. During his guest appearance, he shared a very cryptic reaction, telling listeners that the situation with Eminem was handled privately. And he said, there's nothing to say about it. It's in my hands. He wild. Uh, he probably threatened Eminem, honey, and told Eminem, you better sit down somewhere if you know what's good. Okay. Eminem later claimed that the lyrics were a joke. According to reports by a British uh, entertainment magazine, rapper Jay Electronica came to Diddy's defense at the time, writing via Twitter or X, saying, how dare you accuse Diddy of killing Tupac? You best tread carefully, son, before I come tear your ivory tower down like, Suma, like Suleiman done the Templar night. Now, Diddy managed Tupac's rival, the, the notorious B.I.G., who was also murdered in a drive-by shooting in the early hours of March, on March the 9th of 1996. Diddy has long fended off internet trolling and rumors that he had some involvement in Tupac's death. And so there are there have, however, been new updates in the murder case. Last September, Keefe D. Davis was arrested and charged with allegedly proving or providing the weapon and Tupac Slade. Now, Keefe D.'s trial is scheduled for November the 4th. And in the meantime, Diddy has been facing his own legal woes. Diddy is currently the subject of a federal sex trafficking investigation of which he denies all claims and calls them sickening. Okay, so there you have it. At the end of the day, Diddy said that's been handled privately. <laughs> it's in my hands now. He wild. What do y'all think Diddy said to Eminem? I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Now let's go to this brief clip uh, of this news report about Diddy. And then we're going to take a look at, remember that creepy story that the guy told about going to that Illuminati party? Remember that story? We're going to look at part two. Okay, so like stuff, everyone please like and share. Thank you in advance. Son King Kong, I've been watching my pop since I was a kid. And I'm proud of you, boy. 26-year-old Christian King Combs is being sued for alleged sexual assault. The case has produced audio recordings that allegedly show that he was forcing himself upon her and that he wouldn't take no for an answer. The 31-page lawsuit includes photos of bruises the plaintiff claims she received during the alleged incident. She says this all went down in 2022 while she was working on a yacht Diddy Charter. Diddy is named as well as allegedly aiding and abetting him. Another bombshell claim? During her shift, she noticed partying and alleged drug use and a constant rotation of suspected sex workers and A-list celebrities such as French Montana and actor Cuba Gooding Jr. This lawsuit is bad for Diddy. He may be able to get out of it, but the optics are terrible when he's already facing a criminal investigation. This may be the nail in the coffin for him. In a statement to E.T., Diddy and Christian's attorney said, this complaint is filled with manufactured lies in irrelevant facts, adding, we will be filing a motion to dismiss this outrageous claim. The new lawsuit comes as Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, spoke out on the Art of Dialogue YouTube channel, making new claims about Diddy's notoriously wild parties. People know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, all kind of crazy I don't think it's only celebrities going to be shook. He had politicians in there. He had princes in there. He also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> All right, so you all heard it. Said he had a couple of preachers in there. Uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes, where you at? 
where are you at? Okay. And so with that all being said, hold on. OMG Queen, those creepy stories. <laughs> if he made it all up, he needs an award. Okay. I mean, it's entertaining nonetheless. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to share my screen so you all can see this. <laughs> Buckhurst DC said, 500 years in the bondage of slavery, you ninjas are the village idiots. <laughs> wow, Buckhurst DC, don't hold back. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Jean Dill originally worked as a police officer before becoming Diddy's bodyguard. Yes, I, I did say that previously, beloved. Yep, he sure was. I played a video with him saying that, that he used to be law enforcement. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Nita says, Puff just did what they do all throughout history. Orgies. Yeah. The problem with that is, some of the people that participated were allegedly underaged. So that's the problem. If you've just been having orgies, that's one thing with grown folks, people that are willing and complicit. But when you have underage people or allegations of underage people, that's what's the problem for Diddy. Okay, so now let's get into it. Part two of the story. I'm going to share my screen. And I have the music playing and I'm going to put an overlay on here so I don't have any copyright issues. All right, everyone, please like and share because I didn't take the time out to edit this video. All right, and so with that all being said, let's get into it. Likes up, everyone, please like and share. Thank you in advance. Here we go. I owned a story I did a few months ago the other day to TikTok. And it got over 4 million views overnight. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it's about this party that I got invited to in LA. And when I initially dropped it, it didn't really get any traction. I'm pretty sure the first time I dropped it, it got like 20,000 views. I was just like, I guess nobody cares about the weird thing that happened to me in LA. I guess it's a boring story. I guess it's not cool. I guess we're just going to move on here. And I just kind of let it go. I just like let it slide. I just moved on with my life. I just kept making other content. But in this past month, it blew up. It blew up on YouTube. So I decided to re-upload it to TikTok and it went crazy. And so many people were asking me so many things. People were accusing me of things. People were trying to find inconsistencies in the story. People were being outright victim blamers. And I kind of realized why it just blew up recently with everything that's going on with Diddy, Ryan Garcia and the Drake Bell stuff. So I kind of see why the public attention is on it. But one of the main accusations was that I did this after all of that stuff. But if you go check when I uploaded this video, it was over three months ago. I uploaded it before any of these people came out, before any of these accusations, before any of this stuff was released. And I know there's been similar stories and people say similar things about weird stuff that happens in LA. But I don't think anybody has put out such a detailed account of the stuff that happens there. And that kind of moves me on to my next point. There's a couple things I want to address in this, and I just want to clear up everything for you guys. I'm going to go over all of the most common comments that I got, the most common accusations that I got, just what it seems like you guys want to know the most about. And I'm not sure how much more detailed I could really be about the party in general or the entire experience in general. I could definitely go into more of the stuff of how they were messing with me after. Let me know if you guys want to hear that. But a lot of people are telling me to say what I saw in the sixth room. And that confuses me a little bit because I don't know why you guys want me to say it. Do you guys want me to give you like vivid, horrible descriptions of illegal activities that are like disgusting and done to people that they shouldn't be done to? That's a bit weird to me. You want to hear those words come out of my mouth. I don't want to describe it to you. It's grotesque. It's disgusting. It's hideous. It's heinous. Stuff that they do is unspeakable it's like gross and they record it so they could hold it over you for your entire life so for the people that are saying say what they did i, I want to hear it come out of your mouth that's gross that it's a little bit weird that you so desperately want me to explain to you what i saw what i saw was horrible what i saw was illegal and what i saw was inhumane and i don't want to say it like i don't know what else to tell you i don't want to describe it to you 
it's gross. It's not something cool to say on the internet. You could look at some of the stuff that Ryan was saying. He was being a little bit more graphic than I, I'm going to be here. For the people that are like, say it, I don't believe you unless you vividly describe this horrible thing. You're gross. Go to the dark web, figure something out. Like clearly you guys want to watch something horrible and you want to hear something horrible. I'm not going to give that to you. Another thing that people were asking me to do was to drop names of people that I saw at that party. And I'm not sure why you want me to do that either. Because if you look at all of the people that you see as celebrities, it is so blatantly clear who is involved and who is not. So I'm not really sure why you guys want me to call people out publicly. And I don't know why you would want me to do that for my sake. Because if I start saying these things publicly about very specific people, they're going to sue me for defamation. They're going to come after me with resources that I don't have. I don't have the resources to defend myself from these people. So I'm not sure why you exactly want me to do that. I'm just telling you what happened and how they operate. And I'm just giving you the information of how that world works, telling you that a lot of them are involved in it. I don't know why you guys want me to describe the things. And I don't know why you guys want me to drop specific names. You guys already know. And I don't know why you need to hear me say it. I'm literally not going to lose everything by calling out specific people who have more resources than me that could destroy my life with one lawsuit. Another thing that I want to go over was a lot of people were saying that the way that they were messing with me wasn't scary. People were saying they're just fixing your stuff. They're buying you free half and half. I'd take that. Ha ha ha. LOL. Just completely discrediting how horrific that is going through that where every time you come in your house, something's a little different. I didn't even say all of the stuff that they did. I gave like a couple details because it didn't really seem like people were that interested. So I just kind of stopped posting it because nobody believes you. Nobody cares. Everybody's calling me schizophrenic on Facebook, it's completely dismissing me. But now that other bigger names are saying it, people that you actually believe the Ryan Garcia's, the Diddy allegations, the Drake Bell's, now that these people are saying it, now you're like, oh, wait, maybe he wasn't bullshitting. Maybe this stuff is going on. Maybe we should actually listen to the other people that are saying it. But you guys are still minimizing the kind of stuff that they do. They don't publicly, openly say, hey, we're going after this guy for this because he knows this and I'm going to threaten. This is why I stopped shopping on Amazon and you should too. Don't spend another dime on Amazon. I knew very openly. These people were coming into my private house. They were flipping my batteries. They were fixing things that only I would notice. I can't tell that to anybody who I'm, I, I look crazy saying it on the internet. They fixed my doorknob. They fixed the manual on my car. Like as if you're answering like a Jeopardy thing and it got like a top comment and people aren't funny. So they just copy top comments that they've seen in the past to try to get a little bit of recognition. But people are just saying things like, I don't have proof. I don't have any of this. Why didn't I save any of the stuff? Why didn't I save the invite? I bet you're going to be sitting here waiting for excuses about why I didn't save any of it. But I did. I have it. I have the letter exactly how I described it. All extravagant and weird. It's a bizarre letter. I'll show it to you guys after I'll put it at the end of this video. Like it's weird and bizarre. Pull it out a little bit for you right here. Gold letter. Like this is it. And you could see the weirdest part about it is like, it says like sincerely, but then has like holes punched in it and it has like a medallion hanging from it, like in gold letters. And it goes like, you're invited on the front. It's like this whole extravagant thing. And it has like a wax covering says join us like i have it like i have the proof like i i uploaded this story months ago and nobody cared and they watch it and they go you have no proof you didn't even ask if i had proof the second you guys ask i have proof i have proof so these are a lot of the things like this letter obviously i wouldn't throw away of course i wouldn't throw Let's go to the next part because I'm tired of hearing him complain. He brought this story out. Of course, people are going to have questions. I want to know what he saw too. Get to it, buddy. Get to it. 
Okay. Spill the tea. through the following week and I left out so many details. I asked if anybody would want more details in my last video and over a hundred thousand people let me know in the comments on YouTube and TikTok that they would like to know the details of that following week. So here are those details. Once I got home from the party, I just started freaking out because part of me didn't even want to believe it. And I even found myself trying to convince myself that it didn't happen. That what I saw through that window was some type of game or some type of charade. But as comforting as it would have been to brush it off as something fake, what I saw through that window was just too real. I'm not going to go into explicit detail, but I thought long and hard about what details I could give. To paint the picture clearer for you, they had the new people taking turns laying in a fancy coffin, while like a group of older ones stood around in a circle around the coffin taking turns. And they were doing whatever they pleased to the newcomer, on camera like it was some type of humiliation ritual while all of the others stood around that big circle cheering or just chatting while they were being served drinks by very new people if you know what i'm saying and it really seemed like everything that they were doing was for the cameras like the purpose of this room was to get footage from newcomers that was so graphically heinous that if it was released to the public they would never even be able to explain it and the public humiliation would be too severe to ever recover their career or their life. And the people that were serving drinks in that room weren't the same people that were serving drinks in the other rooms. It was as if they were saving these extremely new servers for this room and beyond. That's all I'm going to say about that. And now I'm going to move on to the week after. I was not expecting that night to go like that. And I never would have had Joe come visit me under those circumstances. Me and Joe had planned that visit for weeks. And I had been so excited to see him and to show him around LA. We had this whole fun itinerary planned and I was almost using this trip as an excuse to have a staycation. I'm not the type of person to not have my stuff together when somebody is coming to visit me. I even hate the thought of bringing somebody all the way across the country into an unstable environment. Traveling is stressful enough, not to mention it's expensive. So if somebody comes to visit me, I really try to take their time seriously because I know that I would hate to go visit somebody and you show up to like a dirty house and then they're having a car issue and then they have a messed up, unclear work schedule. I don't know, I just want people to feel safe, comfortable and taken care of when they come visit. I just want them to feel like they could travel to a stable environment so they can enjoy their trip. So when all of that went down, I started spiraling at the thought of Joe coming to visit me right after. When I look back at it, it might have been the thing that held me together though. I was trying hard to stay calm, think rationally, and not scare Joe. That I actually kind of convinced myself that I was okay. I might have let my paranoia get the best of me if I hadn't felt responsible for Joe's safety. And I might have done something stupid and irrational. It also might have helped because I was constantly on the move the entire time he was there. Just going from tourist attraction to tourist attraction. And everywhere we went, we were just constantly surrounded by masses of people. Not to mention, at night, I had somebody sleeping at the house, which is something that I usually didn't have. And honestly, I only thought about it this way in retrospect. I wasn't actively avoiding these people like this. I was pretending like everything was okay to Joe and pretending to have a good time at all of these places. I was honestly just trying to be a good vacation host, but I do think it worked to my favor because we were just constantly in crowded places surrounded by a bunch of witnesses. And I was sleeping in an apartment with a brand new police officer that's expected to return to duties in a week. I could only imagine that this must have made me a much harder target to deal with. And it was all by chance and by accident. If Joe hadn't visited, I probably would have just locked myself in my apartment. And I probably wouldn't have left. And whoever those people were would have known my location at all times. And easily could have planned something worse. And I just remember that the way their tone changed in that second letter that they sent me was just terrifying. The first day that Joe was there, we went to Runyon Canyon, which is always super packed. And it was super packed that day. And right after we did Runyon Canyon, we went and got lunch at a very busy Korean barbecue spot. So we just went from Runyon Canyon to West Hollywood, two very crowded places. Then after we ate, we wanted to walk it off. So we went and walked down the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which is probably the most crowded street in all of LA. It's probably the dirtiest too. So there was virtually no opportunity to confront me that day without hundreds of witnesses. This must have been frustrating for them 
and it showed in the letter saying that what I did was the worst mistake I ever made and that the curiosity killed the cat. That isn't just slightly threatening. That's a threat laced with anger. It's very clear to me now that they were trying to scare me into doing something stupid. But luckily, I just kept moving. I still to this day do not know how they overheard me and Joe talking about getting half and half when we were just chatting about half and half for our coffees the next morning. There was absolutely nobody around when we said it. So I can only assume that there was some kind of bug in the apartment that was listening in because it was one of the last things that we talked about before heading to bed. I'd gotten a cheap air mattress for Joe to sleep on while he was visiting, but it had a slight leak in it. So I told him to sleep in my bed while he stayed. And I told him that I would deal with the air mattress because I felt like it would be so rude to again, have somebody visit from across the country and then treat them so poorly. So I blew up that air mattress in my bedroom not the living room. So we could both sleep in the bedroom with the door locked. We didn't have anywhere else to sleep that night, so I just had to make it work. I was so paranoid that the only reason I was able to fall asleep was because I barely had gotten any sleep from the night before. And we had an incredibly active day. I passed out due to exhaustion and fatigue, not due to relaxation. And when I had finally woken up and Joe had implied that I had gotten up early to go get half and half, my paranoia went back to 1000 and he was already in the process of making himself a pot of coffee. And I still didn't want to scare him. So I just went along with it. And for that couple minutes, I was just staring at the half and half on the table. And I was just trying to understand, trying to wrap my head around how it could have gotten here. Cause I knew for sure that I didn't buy it. I know that we joked about not having it last night. And right there, it hit me that somebody had been in our apartment the night before, but still, for some reason, I just couldn't get myself to tell Joe. So I just twisted and said, yo, you're on vacation. Let's go get a special coffee from a shop nearby. It felt so crazy being so scared of a bottle of cream, but something in my gut just told me to not let Joe drink it. Even if it was just a subliminal threat to let me know that they were listening to every single word that I said, it still wasn't worth the risk of potentially getting poisoned or drugged. And in hindsight, I just think it was a way for them to tell me that they were listening and to let me know that they would be aware if I told Joe anything that I saw. I didn't think it was a bottle of poison, but I just couldn't take that risk. This made me even more apprehensive to fill Joe in. And the threat that they did worked. I played off the weird half and half and I just went on playing tour guide. And we went a couple blocks away from the apartment just to a nice coffee shop and something a little bit odd happened. To this day, I don't really know if it was another threat or if it was a complete coincidence. But me and Joe were just waiting in a long line because this was a popular coffee shop and two girls were behind us talking, you know, pretty loud, which obviously isn't uncommon because they just seemed like they were having a good time at first. But I couldn't help but to eavesdrop a little bit on their conversation because for a second, Joe was just looking at the menu and I had just a moment of time to listen in instead of having to converse. And I swear to you, these two girls were having the exact same conversation that me and Joe did the night prior about the half and half. And I'm not talking about the concept, like who doesn't have half and half, haha, ha, funny, funny. I mean, they said the exact same five sentences back and forth to each other as me and Joe did the night before. I'm talking verbatim. They did it verbatim with the exact same cadence, enunciation, and emphasis on specific words mimicking our banter style to a T. And Joe even noticed it because he was eavesdropping a bit too and nudged me after they finished the banter and he was just laughing a bit. He found the coincidence funny and he apparently found one of the girls cute. So he turned This story is taking too long. I'm sorry. I can't do it. <laughs> Somebody said he sounded like, <laughs> sounded like an audio book. Okay, you all are so nefarious. <laughs> Claudette said, come on, spit it out. <laughs> right, said, give me the damn cliff notes. <laughs> I don't know why he's just babbling. I don't know why he's just babbling, honey. Please pay attention. Uh, so anyway, that clearly was a waste of time. All right. <laughs> Obsidian Blaze said, this chat vibe is why I stay home and say little to nothing. I have been in some of these people's chats, some of these people's homes. Uh, take from that what you will. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sophie said, 
said, just wait for him to say, gotcha. was very well narrated i enjoyed it and believe it okay <laughs> okay i mean he was just taking too long to get to the point though hold on okay so there's a last part i'm gonna put this one on and see what he's talking about and if he's doing that same old bad bloody i absolutely cannot okay <laughs> i'm not gonna be able to do it Likes up, everyone. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. The story continues. So I immediately just start decoding it the same way that I decoded the numbers on the outside of the box. But it isn't making sense in any way that I'm doing. It's coming out to IAB and HAA, which made no sense to me until I looked back at the tissue paper on the inside of the box. It was happy birthday tissue paper. And my birthday is September 12th. And my girl's birthday is August 11th. And this is where I start to genuinely get scared. But we're just trying our absolute best to keep it together. I didn't like the threats on the outside at all. But these boxes are meant to freak you out. But it got different when I saw our birthdays on. A lot of companies reach out to me, but I'm not often absolutely blown away by the products that they're offering. This company Storyverse reached out to me to sponsor this video, and they are sponsoring this video. But I want to make this very clear. This is the best product for storytelling that I've ever seen. I want so desperately to push their product because it is so high level and so interesting and cool and new and groundbreaking. When I got to look at Storyverse's new app, I was blown away. And if you guys enjoy my stories, I deeply encourage you to download that app and check out this new storytelling style. This is a service that I've been very aware of for a very long time now. To be honest, I've probably watched every single mystery box opening video that's available on YouTube. And for some reason, that subject just really intrigued me. Ordering a random box off of the dark web that could literally contain anything, and it's being created by an anonymous seller, it's just such a freaky, cool experience. The craziest thing about the service is that they usually don't get shipped through FedEx. They just show up one day on your front stoop with no return label or anything. They just pop up. I don't know. It just has this allure about it that has always just made me want to order one. But to be honest, I was always too scared to because I was never sure about how to properly protect my identity on the dark web. So I never even tried. So after I dropped that video, a lot of supporters told me that I should do a mystery box unboxing video. And I really did think it over, but I came to the conclusion that I didn't really feel comfortable ordering it myself. But my friend John knows his way around the dark web, and that man could absolutely make it happen. And he even told me that he would get it shipped to his house and then he would just drop it off at mine. So I wouldn't even have to put any of my personal information. In. And this sounded good to me, especially because I'm trying to deliver you the content that you guys are asking for. So I pull the trigger on it and John puts the order. In. Mind you, we put this order in over a month ago. And these people don't give you any confirmation email, any receipt or any estimated time of arrival. They just take your information and your money and you just have to sit there and hope that it wasn't a scam. And I knew that going in. I knew that this was a sketchy thing to do. I knew that when we purchased it, I might have just lost $500 right there and we were never getting a box. But even if I lose the money, it will be worth it because at least the supporters know that I'm invested in giving them the content that they want. But after about three weeks, I pretty much just gave up on it. And I just kind of came to terms with the fact that I probably got scammed and I just kind of moved on. Until yesterday morning, my buddy John hit me up and he told me that the box had arrived overnight. He just sent me a picture of the box on his doorstep with a text message that said, look what I woke up to. And from the original picture, I could tell that the box was pretty cool. It definitely looked like the sender put a good amount of effort into it. So I was pretty excited because with the mystery box stuff, you always just worry that they're going to send you just some gross stuff in a gross beat up box just gross stuff. Sometimes they just put gross liquids, animal hair, rotten meat, and all that kind of stuff in the box and they just send it and they're like, here's your mystery. And they'll just scribble Sharpie on the outside, just such low effort. So when I saw the picture, I was pretty. Okay, I'm done. I'm done with him and his BS. <laughs> Someone said he must have taken a course in how to string people along. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Hold on. Where is that comment I'm looking for? <laughs> uh, Courtney J said, dude, where's my car? <laughs> Dad said, you're hired. <laughs> okay, none of that had anything to do with that first nefarious story that we heard. Clearly, he's not able to recreate uh, <laughs> recreate that. You okay? Old school island girl says he tells the story about the Hollywood party he so-called went to. Yeah, I know. We heard that one, beloved. We were listening to the rest of this because these were supposed to be parts two, three, and four. Okay? Uh, but he wasn't talking about anything. So, somebody said make him stop. Okay, this is all nefarious. Okay, so anyway, with that I've been saying, much to do about nothing, guys. <laughs> ah, that's what I get for not listening to it ahead of time. Okay, Tatiana said, you guys have ruined it for me. <laughs> Listen, don't worry. That first story was pretty convincing. And we have heard before that those things absolutely do happen. Okay, uh, so anyway, with that all being said, everyone, please get the likes up. Please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, if that long, drawn-out story didn't turn you off. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, make sure that you guys tune in for the ba on the backup channel, okay? The Queen Amadisha Court TV show, because I'm about to go live on there. You all do not want to miss this, okay? The police shots at this black man 96 times. Okay, over a traffic stop. I want you all to pay attention. A seatbelt violation. 96 times. You all don't want to miss that. Reggie said, great broadcast. Thank you, beloved. Roddy said, thank you, Queen. You're welcome, beloved. Okay, so you all don't want to miss this. And also, a teacher was trying to recruit students to uh, have them work for her son, who was a whole pimp. Okay, and this is a woman who looks like me. I just want you all to pay attention. It's all nefarious. All right. <laughs> Ron, the truth said I was about to grab my pillow, Queen. <laughs> okay. Well, that all being said, let's get ready to tune into the backup channel. Jazz said, ain't no way Puffy should be free right now. Uh, you got that right, beloved. Okay. Uh, so like that, please like and share. Thank you all for tuning in once again. I hope to see you all on the backup channel. All right. Each one, teach one. That's how we grow and thrive. Do something productive, constructive, but never destructive. And always remember, beloveds, to keep the most high first in your lives. Skin. God all in my blood Kings all in my circle You touch one of mine and you're done They show no love for the queen Why you hating on me? Is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans? I got dreams like King Luther Shed blood like Kusa You ain't helping my people I ain't got nothing to say to ya I want all the smoke like hookah Talking reparations America won't be great until they give us compensation I'm like, uh I'm the hottest right now That's See right. a bunch of lames out here trying to jock on my style They be doing too much I'm the queen, it's too easy It's like they all in Popeyes How they be talking so greasy Real I just sit back and laugh While these haters get mad <laughs> So nefarious how they don't want my pockets with chatter I tell them they can do better These snakes in the grass Can leave a bite on your ass Cause y'all be trusting too fast I got my foot on the gas other one on they necks Dropping receipts on haters You better show some respect I'm never facing regrets We only facing the threats Running through every challenge Like a relay break, no sweat It's a cold game So I got that blanket with me Now that my people awake And ain't no going to sleep I do not play by my peace This time I'm playing for keeps You talking slick But when I see you like them ends We gon' meet And now I got gold all in my skin in my blood. my blood, kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done, they show no love for the queen, why they hating on me, is it cause I'm free and I got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got gold all in my skin, God all in my blood, my blood. kings all in my circle, you touch one of mine and you done, That's they show it. no love for the queen, why they hating on me, is it cause I'm free and I 
got Malcolm X in my jeans and I got